everyone. This is The Common Thread, the official podcast of the Howard Thurman Center for Common Ground. I'm Amanda Dowd. I'm Will Clef. I'm Howard DePass, Jr. And we're talking about something that has been getting a lot of press lately, um, both you know nationally and especially here at BU, gender-neutral housing. It's been debated a lot. Um, you have the CGSA working hard on it. You have student government working hard on it. And we do have a friend of ours who came in today to talk to us, Swanson Ninen. He's an MLK scholar and also an LGBTQ activist. Thanks, Swanson, for coming on. Thanks for having me, you guys. Yeah, so we're really excited. So we're just going to be talking about all things gender-neutral housing related, and I am super excited about it. I feel like it'll be really good to clarify some misconceptions and just um, – Get an update on what's going on, because I feel like a lot of people aren't sure what's going on right now mm. at this point, now that it's died down a little bit. Um, but just to start, I mean, Student Gov started trying to get this implemented a couple of years ago. Um, they came up with a five-year multi-step plan, and from that, you have Gender Neutral BU. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so <clears throat> um, student government submitted this um, really thorough proposal to um, the BU administration and essentially the proposal was accepted and um, gender neutral housing was going to be a thing and then the administration um, decided that it was not their top priority anymore mm -hmm. um, and decided to halt the process. Um, so gender neutral BU kind of formed as a response to that um, and it formed from um, leaders of student government and the CGSA and they and other community members um, all people who were you know interested in helping helping this cause of gender neutral housing mm -hmm. and from my understanding you have student government kind of got it started but now they have like the logistical end and the CGSA is heading up the um, advocacy end so it's very much like a dual process and a dual cause at this point um, but I want to tell I want you to tell me a little bit about your involvement with it and why you're interested in it why you're for it Just tell yeah me what your views are on it so <clears throat> I think it's something that's really important for all students at BU um, it really should just be an option to live with whoever you want to live with. Mm -hmm. um, it's an issue of comfortability, but it's also an issue of safety for some students. Mm -hmm. um, and what I like to say is that everyone has a gender, so this is, a, this is an issue that applies to everybody, um, not just a certain um, group of people. This is completely applicable to all students of the BU community. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how I like to kind of start off um, my my saying of you know whenever I'm talking about this issue mm -hmm. Go ahead. um I mean personally I kind of feel like it's absurd that we don't already have it and I think that it's odd that there's not more of a precedent set by other schools in the country so um Brown has it yeah well <laughs> of course Brown has it <laughs> <laughs> Brown. um but Brown are there Brown. other schools that we're using as a sort of model for how we want to implement this or like uh, I guess, is there inspiration coming from other schools? Yeah, you know? there's a, um, <clears throat> a number of schools that have um, really amazing programs for gender-neutral gender housing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure NYU is one of those. Um, I, th I believe George, uh, GW, George Washington University, is also one of them. Um, and those are very similar institutions to Boston University. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. big um, urban schools. Big urban schools. Um, and so I think that was a big part of the student government's proposal is that um, look at these comparable institutions. They have this. Um, what what's wrong? Not what's wrong with us, but you know, why aren't we necessarily keeping up with them in this in this issue? Do you know how long ago they um, instituted gender neutral housing? I do not know um, exactly when it started. I'm pretty sure it's a fairly recent initiative. However, okay. Can you tell me why? Um, what is it that made you want to get involved? Like from a personal yeah. standpoint, why did this like speak out to you or call to you? So I, um, I've had really positive experiences with BU housing. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, I know some people who ha who have had really negative experiences um, with their roommates. Mm -hmm. uh, I got really lucky last year. I was placed in a triple in West Campus, and I got along really well with my roommates. Um, they were both really respectful. Um, and we were able to, you know, have a really comfortable environment. Mm -hmm. um, but not all students um, are as lucky as I was. Mm -hmm. And I do know um, a couple friends who have been really uncomfortable with their roommates because um, their roommates don't necessarily respect them, their sexual identity, their gender identity. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really not fair um, 
for our, the BU students to uh, have to pay this much to live in housing that makes them uncomfortable and makes them feel unsafe. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's a really big issue because freshmen do not have an option of living off campus. You know, if I have a bad experience my first year, I have the option to move off campus and live with whoever I want. I can live by myself if I can afford that, or I can live with friends. Um, freshmen don't have that option. They, are, they have to live on campus. Um, and, <clears throat> you know, not everyone can afford to live in a single and live by themselves on campus. It's really expensive, and, you know, mm -hmm. some people have to live in doubles or triples or quads. Um, so they really should have that option of choosing who, who they live with. Go ahead. Do you think that, um, like, you would still be this passionate about it if you didn't have such a pleasant experience with your roommates, or do you feel like uh, your experience has really helped to shape uh, you know, like your, not only your stance on this issue, but you know your 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 need and your want to like go forward with it. Yeah, that's a really good question. I think that my good experience um, makes me want to be on the side of BU housing. You know, mm -hmm. I had a good experience. I want to make sure other people have a good experience. Um, and I think that if I didn't have a good experience, I would be fighting maybe even harder than I am right now mm -hmm. um, for this issue, just to make sure that you know people have like the best experience they can have you know this is college this is a, a really good time for forming our identities and you know coming into fruition with ourselves and just I want to make sure that everyone has that you know amazing opportunity to do to do that mm -hmm. um you know I feel like on a more serious note um you mentioned that sometimes this can be a safety issue mm -hmm. for certain students who maybe fit outside the gender binary yeah if you will um but unfortunately some people tend to make light of the issue there's yeah. a a Be You Today video. Yes. It was honestly a joke. I yeah. mean, I saw it, and they basically just made it into, oh, you have, you know, a girlfriend and boyfriend living together, and there's going to be hair in the drain. Yeah. You know? Mm. Um, and can you talk a little bit about why this is such a serious issue? Definitely. It goes way beyond that. Yeah. So it's interesting because, you know, that Be You Speaks uh, video is kind of, it does show what some community people are thinking about the topic, um, which... I think just goes to show that we have a lot to do in terms of, you know, educational outreach on this topic. Mm -hmm. um, sure, it can be an issue of, you know, I'm a guy and I want to live with my best friend who's a girl, um, but it also has to do with, you know, people who don't necessarily um, fit into the gender binary of male or female um, and don't feel safe um, living with somebody of the um, quote-unquote same sex. Right. Um, and you know, that video kind of just touches on um, a bunch of stereotypes um, on, you know, how people think of boys and how people think of girls. And, you know, boys are dirty and girls are clean. Girls have a lot of shoes and take up, you know, that kind of, those kinds of issues, which sometimes are true and sometimes are not. And it's important to keep in keep that in mind um, when you're talking about this kind of issue. Because yeah. for, some, for a lot of people, that is um, what the problem is, you know, like, Right. If I'm a guy, like, can I live with a girl? I don't know if I could handle that. Mm -hmm. But for some people, it is a serious issue of being able to feel comfortable in their home and mm -hmm. making sure they have that sense of this is where I live. I want to be able to be as comfortable as I can be. Right. Mm -hmm. It seems like um, from the BU Today video and just people I've talked to in general, there are tons of misconceptions about what gender neutral housing would be and like what its purpose is. Um, but at the same time, it's necessary to have the support of the student body because, um, I mean, this is supposed to be at least a semi-democratic system. Yeah. Um, so uh, how would you suggest that we educate more people so that they can understand the issues and um, can put in their support mm -hmm. for this kind of thing? Mm -hmm. I think that's a really good point. Um, I think that it's... You know, per, on the per, on a personal level, I found that video extremely frustrating. Mm -hmm. But I also I really do understand where people are coming from. They don't mean it maliciously. Mm -hmm. um, it's just maybe they don't have a friend who, you know, is outside of the gender binary. Um, and I'm not. I can't blame them for that. You know, um, what I can do is try to um, reach out to them and say, Hey, I have a lot of friends who um, don't fit into this binary, um, and they would really appreciate having the option to live with whoever they want. Um, so I know the Gender Neutral BU Initiative is working on a zine 
um, which is kind of like a self-published magazine. I don't mm -hmm. know if you all know what those are. Mm. Um, but they're going to be doing that, and it's going to have kind of educational out, uh, components to it and give definitions to what does it mean to be outside of the gender binary? You know, mm -hmm. what does it mean to be transgender? What's the difference between transgender and transsexual? Mm -hmm. um, it'll, it'll, it'll cover a lot of these issues. Um, and you know, that kind of, that kind of thing is going to be really helpful for the BU community to understand, um, you know, the other issues of gender neutral housing. And let me just clarify really quick, <coughs> the, um, the BU Today video, mm -hmm. it was heavily, heavily edited. I spoke to someone involved with it mm -hmm. and she was just like, yeah, they asked us the stupidest questions. And even when we tried to speak about yeah. mm. the, you know, the gender issue, yeah. they didn't put that in. So that, that was really BU Today just yeah. being extremely, yeah. I don't even, I can't even call it that journalism. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Yeah. Um, it was definitely not. More well, editing than they needed. It was, it was, yeah, it was yeah. Really stupid. I'm like, I'm like, really, you guys? Yeah. Uh, I do want to clarify one other point. You know, I mean, I feel like we do need to talk about the criticisms of gender neutral Definitely. Housing. Definitely. Um, I have been told that there's this misconception that people, you know, students think that they could be randomly put into. Right. Assigned to their. A yeah, into yeah. a gender neutral apartment or suite. That's not true at all. Kind of defeat the purpose even. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It actually does. It completely. I mean, if yeah. the goal is to have a safe space, <laughs> and you're just and putting you're just like, yeah, like, okay. <laughs> all right, <laughs> nothing has changed. Great. Yeah, that yeah. could never, never happen. From from what I was told, um, and my own, you know, research looking at the language of it, it's a, it's the type of situation where everyone opts in mm -hmm. together. You mm -hmm. know exactly who you're going to be living with. Um, but then there's the really common argument against it seems to be, well, what if you have a straight couple living together? Right, mm. and. I think I'm really glad you brought that up. Yeah. I think that's a, you know, I was talking to my mom about this, and she, uh -huh. she, I was on the phone, and she got really serious, and she goes, Swanson, I mean, I hear what you're saying, but what happens when a couple wants to live together? And it's important to recognize that that kind of argument is, um, is valid in some ways, but it's also really heteronormative um, in the sense that it's assuming that all people are straight and mm -hmm. all people are, people are heterosexual. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not the reality of the world we live in. Um, a lot of people don't identify with heterosexuality. Mm -hmm. And, you know, right now I could live with my boyfriend mm -hmm. as, as the way things are. Um, and that's... If you're living with just another guy. If I'm living yeah. with just another, another guy, there's no, you know, BU rule that says that I can't be dating that person. Mm -hmm. um, so it's important to keep that in mind when we're having these kinds of discussions that... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, that is a possibility mm -hmm. if we have gender neutral housing, but that's also a possibility right now. Right. Um, and another thing I like to say is that we're at the point in our lives where we're becoming adults um, and we're making our own decisions. And if you make the decision to live with a partner um, on BU housing, that's your decision. Um, and some people might see it as immature, some people might see it as a smart decision, mm -hmm. but whatever, it's your decision, and you're going to have to either deal with the repercussions or the consequences, or you'll get to see how awesome it is. Yeah. Um, but it, it really is your decision. Yeah, I, I, tend to, I tend to feel that way. I mean, whenever, especially when I hear a parent be like, I don't <coughs> want my daughter living with her boyfriend, I don't want my, like, mm -hmm. my son living with his girlfriend. I'm like, if your child is stupid or smart enough yeah <laughs> depending on the situation to right. live with their boyfriend yeah. or girlfriend let them do it like, yeah that's mm. not I, I i don't honestly i don't i feel like maybe it's harsh i don't feel like it's a problem mm. you know yeah i think also it just comes down to a value judgment mm -hmm. like we have to ask ourselves what's more important that couples aren't living together or that these individuals who are affected by gender neutral housing have a safe space to go to and can be comfortable living there because right. these are circumstances mm -hmm. that they have to deal with for an entire year mm -hmm. Um, housing does not make it easy to <laughs> switch. No. Right. So. no, they really, they don't. <laughs> not to mention, I feel like it's a very puritanical argument, and I would invite anybody to come visit me <laughs> on the weekends right? if you want to see how right. things really go. Yeah. You know, not, not, uh, whoa. I, mean, not <laughs> I don't mean it in a negative way, but let's be real. I mean, I mean it's not like we're, yeah. you know, living yeah. a traditional life yeah. Yeah. here, <laughs> right. you know? Right. I mean, it's just the way it is. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, someone uh, else brought up to me that, there, you do need a certain maturity, I think, to live in a gender neutral situation, especially if you're someone who is not necessarily transgendered or um, gay or 
fits within the LGBTQ community. For yeah. example, let's say you're straight and cisgendered and just want to live with your friends. Yeah. Um, and someone said, oh, well, you know, what if someone is drunk and they see their roommate in a towel and something happens? Mm -hmm. You know, that the uncomfortable situations, what if there's some sort of sexual harassment mm -hmm. situation? Like, mm -hmm. what's your response to that? So my response to that is, and I think my response to a lot of these questions are, you know, educational outreach. Mm -hmm. um, there are ways that we can inform the community on, like, how to deal with these issues um, and whether that means, you know, a little bit of extra training for the residence assistants, the mm -hmm. RAs, or if that means having a pamphlet distributed um, to those gender-neutral housing um, rooms that say, hey, you're living with someone – um, either of the opposite gender or someone who doesn't um, identify with the gender binary, um, here are some problems or here are some things that um, might happen uh, when you're living with this person. Um, here are some ways to, um, here are some communication skills um, that you can use to talk about um, whatever issues that may come up. And it's also important to recognize that these issues can happen in same gender rooms right now. Um, and there's also a way to go about addressing those as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Um, another concern that I've uh, heard by some people who I've spoken to mm -hmm. is that um, college as a whole, you know, whether it's housing or, um, you know, different clubs or organizations that we may be involved in, you know, our preferences, uh, colleges and universities tend to make us feel really uh, comfortable in our own space, mm -hmm. something that the outside world and the real world may not always do right. when we you know when we finally graduate when we finally go into our work lives mm -hmm. and so on and so forth we may not get the same shelter and the same um, mm -hmm. comforting experience that college offers so I guess my question is how do you feel about like that dynamic you know yep. about about maybe maybe sheltering someone too much to the point where yep. you almost give them a false illusion of what they may encounter once they mm -hmm. leave and that may wind up harming them as opposed to uh, helping them yeah you know? yeah I'm actually really glad you brought that up it's something I've been kind of thinking about in my own life a lot lately mm. um, and I think when I think about that um, I think how BU is in my personal life preparing me um, for the real world mm -hmm. and it's also gonna help me discover which communities I'm gonna want to live in mm -hmm. um, after college and I really identify with the the queer community the LGBTQ community mm -hmm. um, and I know that after after I graduate I'm gonna be looking to um, kind of settle in some sort of queer friendly community mm -hmm. um, and I think that it's not necessarily sheltering um, students, you know, it's really, it is in a way preparing them and helping them develop their personal sense of identity mm -hmm. and helping them figure out where they want to go um, with their life after college. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and I, I mean, I tend to agree with that. I mean, you know, on a, on a broader view, there are places on this campus that I don't necessarily like to go because I don't agree with the ideology or the point of yeah. view or the practice, whatever, you know, what have you. But when I go home at the end of the day, I don't want to be dealing with opposition. I don't want to – I just want to chill. Yeah. I really – I just yeah. – you know, I don't want to have to deal with any opposition. I just want to, you know, be. Yeah. Mm. You know? Yeah. Mm. And it's it's really problematic when you're not – when you don't feel comfortable enough to do that. Mm -hmm. um, when you have this sense of stress when you're sitting in your bed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is your roommate going to make fun of you for what you're wearing? Is your roommate going to – um, throw some nasty words at you. Is your is your are they, are they just going to harass you? You know, those are real issues that a lot of people have to deal with. I mean, I think the very extreme case that goes way beyond anything gender neutral into you know just it was a crime was um, the Tyler Clemente case at Rutgers. Mm -hmm. You know, right. yeah. he was with his roommate. Right. Um, filming, and that's a hate crime. So that's yeah. an extreme situation. Yeah. But you know, it's possible that. Had he had the option to choose a roommate mm -hmm. who fit within the LGBTQ mm -hmm. community, it wouldn't have been yeah. an issue. Yeah. Do we know if uh, they like have had any of that uh, sort of housing implementation now, or like for Rutgers? I mean, I haven't heard Do anything. Me mm. neither, actually. No, actually. I'm wow. definitely gonna look that up later, though. Hmm. I've heard about other things around, like different schools putting in things, right. um, like starting to implement it, or they've right. already implemented it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I um, think that spoke to everybody across the nation, yeah. really. Yeah. yeah. Um, you did mention, though, 
like, you know, those different situations that can arise. Mm -hmm. Because obviously you're dealing with, um, you know, kinds of problems that sometimes that your average cisgender person doesn't have to deal with. Mm -hmm. Um, and that maybe, you know, RAs need to be specially trained mm -hmm. to deal with those issues. Mm -hmm. How do you think they should be trained? Who should yeah. be training them? What should be included? In yeah. That? I, I um, hmm, let's see. So I think it's important to note that while I refer to them now as like, quote unquote, different issues, mm -hmm. I think that I, I firmly believe that once we are a year or so into gender neutral housing, these quote unquote issues are gonna become sort of normalized and it will be um, no problem having to deal with them. And they'll become just like any other sort of roommate problem that you could have right now. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but in terms of training, tr what sort of training for RAs, I think it would be, um, how I, I, I would start off with like defining some um, maybe confusing terms for RAs. Um, starting off with what does transgender mean? Um, and, you know, what does cisgender mean? And I think, tell, you know, yeah. Actually, tell them what cisgender, because I just realized I'm using yeah. the term cisgendered and not everybody knows what yeah. it means. So transgender is when your gender does not um, align with the gender you were assigned at birth. Mm -hmm. um, cisgender is where your gender and your sex that you were assigned at birth match up. So It's the equivalent <coughs> of being gay and straight. Right. Yeah. So I am a cisgender male in mm -hmm. the sense that I identify my gender is male and I am biologically a male. Mm -hmm. um, so I am privileged enough that my sex and my gender match up. Mm -hmm. So I am cisgender. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, going through these sorts of steps with RAs and making sure they understand these terms and understand that while it might not happen a lot, it is common enough um, that, you know, we really do need to, <clears throat> excuse me, we do need to be addressing these. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, I, I don't know what the RA training is like, mm -hmm. um, but I think there's a lot to say about just going over communication skills mm -hmm. um, and going over what it means to be respectful. As cheesy as that sounds, I think that can go a long way and just um, re-emphasizing um, listening to people and hearing out what they have to say um, and really respecting people's identities and also where, they, where they're coming from, um, mm -hmm. what their family upbringing is, um, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You know, um, I'm an RA now, yeah. and um, the, the good thing about training is that uh, we're, we're taught a bunch of things on a very, uh, like we're, we're taught to be very v versatile, mm -hmm. you know, um, so whether it's a, a lockout mm -hmm. <laughs> or, you know, somebody can't stand their roommate, you right. know, we have to be able to um, to sort of assess all these different situations, being neutral, you know, being respectful of each other. And so, like, when you when you mentioned that um, you don't think it would be very different from any other uh, situation, I, I do actually agree with that. You know, that once once it comes to the point where um, it's been sort of, you know, quote unquote, normalized um, and people can move forward with it, mm -hmm. then it won't be such a uh, an issue that you have to put a lot of thought into, like, man, how am I going to solve this issue? You know, right. but once it's actually incorporated into the training program, um, these different terms, uh, which are very important, like I just yeah. want to say, like, personally, you yeah. know, like, mm -hmm. I think it's I think if one thing uh, people can really misunderstand mm -hmm. are the terms themselves yep. and just because they, they don't know yeah you know? like no one's no one's told them they haven't looked it up they simply don't and you can't blame them for that no. you know no, right you definitely can't. i feel like maybe you know not and i don't mean this is a diss but not all ras are created equal like you know there are definitely some who are great <laughs> very who, who understand <laughs> the sensitivity <laughs> 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 and then you might not be as on board and, right. you know, taking into account that, especially when you're assigning it with, you know, a more sensitive yeah. issue, mm -hmm. like gender neutral housing, especially when it's new. I think that's mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. um, do you think it would be beneficial, especially in the beginning stages for them, when I say them, you know, res life, to bring in maybe outside um, mm. training resources like LGBTQ organizations yeah. in Boston? That's a good question. Um, I haven't put that much thought into that. I mm -hmm. think that um, there could be value in doing something like that, mm -hmm. but I also think it's important that the issue isn't looked at as like something that's gonna 
like we know that there's going uh, we need to not take the attitude that we know there's going to be issues with this there are going to be problems so we need to have this um, outside training to make sure we know how to deal with it i think that um, if done correctly there is there are appropriate ways to have um, this training for ras uh, but it does need to be carefully done mm -hmm. just so just so that people aren't don't feel alienated by this because that that's the point that's that's the opposite of the point of gender neutral housing we want to make sure that um, these people are feeling feeling the community right. and aren't feeling alienated and we want to make sure that they feel loved and comfortable so we've talked about gender neutral housing I'm yeah um but the new thing that seems to be really getting a lot of attention are gender neutral bathrooms. Yeah. Uh, I can't even tell you. I mean, I I Google just to see mm -hmm. um, gender neutral housing. We had a few things come up, and then I Google gender neutral bathrooms, and I can I just say the number of results. I mean, it is becoming like a huge phenomenon everywhere. Um, what do you think? What do you think about that? I'm just curious. I love gender neutral bathrooms. Um, <laughs> I'll just start off with that. You I think that into a <laughs> I know I know I would wear that all the time, right. maybe not all the time. Um, but I think that it's another really important issue um, that I think is getting more more and more attention because mm -hmm. um, it's something that once again applies to everyone. Everyone has to use a bathroom. Um, you can't always use the bathroom in your home, you know people have to use public bathrooms, um, and a lot of harassment happens in bathrooms, um, and it's important to note that. And there are a lot of misconceptions about gender-neutral bathrooms that I would love to help clear up. I think that um, when I think about bringing gender-neutral bathrooms to BU, it's not taking every single bathroom and making it gender-neutral. It's about taking some bathrooms and making them gender neutral but then also keeping um you know the male female bathrooms mm -hmm. um because the point is to respect all people's genders and you know i identify as a male that's my gender mm -hmm. um so you know you want to make sure you respect that um and this past weekend actually i went to the five college queer conference at hampshire college um, over yeah yeah over in Western Mass um, and it was an, it was a really amazing opportunity um, because they have um, quote unquote all gender bathrooms which is a term I, I guess like a phrase that I hadn't even considered you know all gender versus gender neutral which I think is is really awesome that they use this language of all gender um, because it's even more inclusive and even more welcoming than gender neutral. Is there a difference between that and gender neutral, or is it just, like, the phrasing? I, it might be phrasing. I I don't know. I was thinking about it, and I am I think I'm more comfortable with all gender, mm -hmm. the term all gender, mm -hmm. just because gender neutral almost seems neutralizing, which mm -hmm. s seems obvious, but mm -hmm. all gender seems just more, like, inclusive and more of, like, an umbrella term. Um, and more than that, they have um, their their versions of male and female bathrooms are um, it, they have signs that say this bathroom is for self-identified males. Mm -hmm. So it really makes you think how how do I d identify with my gender? You know, I'm making a conscious decision to identify in a certain way, which I think is really important because it makes it does make people think. I read. Um a really interesting article because obviously we're talking about this as college students. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we're all legal adults. We're going out into the world. We have a louder voice, so to speak. Um, but there was not too long ago an issue with um, a girl in in Colorado who she's very young. She's six or seven, mm -hmm. um, and she's transgendered. So she was born a boy, mm -hmm. um, and she wanted to use the girls bathroom at school because she identifies as female and uh, the school told her she wasn't allowed to they asked her instead to use um, like a fan you know those family restrooms yeah. or the nurses mm. um, bathroom um, you know they didn't w or, or the boys bathroom 
Um, and I was reading it, and my knee-jerk response was to be like, that's awful, you know, what is wrong with them? Like, they, why are they being so ridiculous? And then I saw um, the criticism, and they said that they took into account her feelings, but also the issues of other people being uncomfortable, to other students who might feel weird. Yeah. And I kind of got it. I did, like, I'll admit, like, I can see why it would be confusing um, to, because as she gets older, she's going to develop, you know, a penis, and mm-hmm. that's the reality until she goes through that surgery. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it was a little upsetting to me that you don't have kids who are being raised to understand it mm-hmm. and to deal with it, mm-hmm. you know? And it's it's one of those sticky situations where it's like, yeah, I get that kids are going to be uncomfortable, but should they really be uncomfortable, yeah. you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of one of those, like, it, it, it starts at home. It does. Yeah, and I feel like that's really a cultural thing. Like, it is a cultural thing. Our is. society has always been... Well, most of the time, been pretty like heteronormative, um, and that still comes out a lot. But that's changing. Like mm-hmm. last yeah. year, for the first time ever, more than half of the country supported same-sex marriage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that heteronormativity is kind of going away, and it's doing it slowly, but I think it is going away. Mm-hmm. And so eventually, maybe in the next fifty or one hundred years, we will start raising our kids with this idea that. Uh, gender and sexuality are fluid, mm-hmm. and you are what you identify as. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe these early cases are just like um, uh, sort of test runs, like the first ones yeah. who will set the standard of acceptance for later. Right, mm. and, and it's unfortunate for them that they have to be the test runs. Yeah, right. You know? it, yeah, yeah it nobody, would be terrible. Nobody wants to be. No, but I mean, it'll but help it everyone in the end because we have to get over this. Um, the other issue that kind of came up with gender neutral bathrooms is that on a very basic level that really anyone can relate with is what if you have you know a small child and their opposite sex parent Mm -hmm. you know like you have a three-year-old boy with his mom or something like that and i remember when i was younger um you know i mean my when i was really little my dad would take me to the bathroom and it wasn't a big deal but then there would become an age where it wasn't appropriate and you know i know that it was nerve-wracking because like if my mom wasn't there you know, I was too old to go into the men's room, but he certainly couldn't come with me in the right. women's restroom. Right, right, And, you know, I think... Decisions, just, decisions. Decisions. <laughs> and it's like, you know, I yeah. should like, okay, I'll stand outside the door, yeah. but I don't know what's going on. And I feel like, honestly, uh, it would be a little bit more nerve-wracking, especially if you're a mom with a little boy. Because, you know, mm. I'm just going to say it, it's a little bit more dangerous when you have men. You don't know what's going on in there. That's that's very NPC, but I think it's a reality. Mm. Um so people are saying, you know, let's let's have gender neutral bathrooms for that reason. Right. And the University of Central Florida actually just um, they they basically repurposed family bathrooms and just said all inclusive, like gender neutral. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was really just a matter of language, but it it was their acknowledgement of the issue, mm-hmm. you know, which I think is totally valid. Um, but then there are some people who are like, no, this, this segregates people. Why do we have this at all? It segregates those who fit outside the gender binary by putting them in their own space. You're taking right. them away. You're not just letting them use male-female bathrooms. Mm. I don't think it's about not letting them use male-female bathrooms. It's just about giving them another some, option well, if they want that. Some people do, but some are like, no, they're not allowed to use. Like, if you're transgender, they don't want you using your... Hmm. Okay. Like, if you're male to female transgendered they don't want you using the female ba- the women's bathroom because mm-hmm. biologically you're not a woman and i think that um this you know this entire conversation um we and you know in society we put so much emphasis on bi- biology um everything that we do i think is centered on biology and you know where's the science in this and I think that is it's important to take into consideration how this might sound silly but how people feel and how people identify and you know people's feelings are always going to be valid and um biology is always going to be developing um and we're always going to be finding out new information Mm -hmm. um so it's important to keep that into consideration when we're talking about these sorts of things that Mm -hmm. you know in the end we're we're not going to know everything about biology mm-hmm. hmm. and do you think what i'm just curious like what do you think is the ideal yeah. bathroom situation because you have some people i feel like there are the two polar opposites you have the people who say there should be nothing like that there's male mm-hmm. and female done 
you know. Yeah. And then there are the other people who say, no, no, there should be, you know, no, bath- bathrooms should never be segregated. Yeah. There should be everybody all in there together. And yeah. I personally don't think that either is the answer. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Huh. Well, I kind of have an ideal, and I, I think that my answer for, ide- like, ideally is having all gender-neutral bathrooms. Um, I think that we can all get to a point where we're comfortable um, using, you know, these facilities with whoever, um, whoever identifies with whatever gender. Um, that being said, I think the reality of our life is that um, that's not going to happen. Um, I think that that being said, there are definite steps we can take um, towards having gender-neutral facilities. Mm-hmm. Um and I think the a first easy step is, you know, having a few gender neutral bathrooms, mm-hmm. um, in all institutions. You know, Boston University. This is, I in my eyes, it's something that can you know kind of easily be done. It's mm-hmm. you know this the change of a sign and a quick email, mm-hmm. um, saying, and saying that this is a gender neutral facility. All all people of all genders are permitted to use this bathroom. Um, and, you know, that, that is a first step of, yeah. No, I just want to clarify. So having, like, a, a, a men's bathroom, a women's bathroom, and then a gender-neutral mm-hmm. bathroom. Mm-hmm. I, think I think that's, I think that, for, in my eyes, that's a very, very fair first step. Right. Um, and I would be, I would honestly be extremely happy with that. Mm-hmm. Um, in the end, I would love to see all gender-neutral facilities everywhere mm-hmm. in the world. Mm-hmm. But that's very idealistic of me. Mm-hmm. What about you guys? What do you think? I I don't know. Like, I want to believe that. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, I think, objectively speaking, I do, and I have this weird, like, societal emotional reaction that's like, no, don't take away my men's <laughs> bathroom. <laughs> but, like, I, objectively speaking, I know that's absurd because, like, I don't know. I think that all of these barriers that we draw up between ourselves are kind of, um, like, social constructs mm-hmm. you wouldn't yeah <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know good old but, will so i don't know this is just a thing i have to think about more i guess okay so objectively i believe that everything should be all uh gender neutral bathrooms but like in my heart right now i have to convince myself of that right so i don't know it's weird what do you think? yeah i take a similar stance where everything when, when facing these big decisions, um, every concrete decision that one person makes has to come with a sound amount of uh, education and like research, one that I admittedly don't have right now. Yep. Um, but I, I do think that a lot of times, like not only in our society, but in our country, we, we, we overlook the comfort of others and then look to everybody else but ourselves when we have hate crimes, when we have... Um, you know, it's like outlandish ridicule. Mm-hmm. And I think that that stems from not um, exercising our our like humanitarian side, you know, to, to, to sort of come for others and, you know, make them feel like they can just be themselves. You know, and if, if that takes a gender neutral uh, bathroom here or there before, you know, making it something that's more that you see everywhere, mm-hmm. then I think that, that that wouldn't hurt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I tend to think, I think that there should absolutely always be the option. Yeah. 100%. Because I, I, I do see how it could be really uncomfortable, especially, like, you know, um, if you are in transition, maybe it's not even about other people's comfort, but just your personal comfort, yeah. you know? Like, yes, you're becoming a woman or you're becoming a man in terms of you're starting that process, um, to like, going through, you know, the hormone therapy, the um, surgery, but... Maybe you're still questioning a little bit. Maybe you're just not sure where you fit in, and it's a great it's it's a way of taking away the pressure of something super simple. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think I have to be honest. The people who think that we should never have any kind of segregation in bathrooms, though, at all, I think are a little nuts. Yeah, because I feel like honestly that could get into a little bit of a safety issue. Definitely. Um, I don't think of myself as a pessimist at all, but I think that you're. You know, there are always going to be people who take advantage of the situation. Yeah. You know, and if you have a situation where 
you're not anybody can just go into a bathroom what if it's more secluded or what if you have some kind of you know predator that's mm-hmm. gonna yeah you know yeah i just i it, that that makes me uncomfortable i'm like i think that's a little too idealistic right i guess i've watched too much america's best wanted <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it takes uh, a balance you know it does I, take a balance i think that um the the g- gender neutral um not housing bathrooms <laughs> um it definitely isn't a bad idea it's definitely you know something that a lot of people can benefit from yeah. but just because that happens doesn't mean that you can't you can take away the you know uh male only and female only right. bathroom you know because I, I do think about that as well like because i could see that turning into a bad situation really quickly mm-hmm. and then having the entire country be in an uproar you yeah. know this never should this shouldn't have been the, the case you know yeah. so i think it's important to sort of maintain that that balance i really just always get the balance between the old and the new what is okay with the old? Because not everything, like, and, and this is not just gender issues or sexuality issues, but in any situation, as mm. things change, what's okay to, mm. to keep? And what do we need to change? It's that ever evolving, you know, push and pull mm-hmm. between people who are more traditional and people who are, you know, more, what's the word? More innovative? Yeah, Outdoor. progressive, perhaps. Progressive. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Thank you. I'm like, can't even speak today. Um, yeah, I think it, it should be very interesting to see where it goes. I mean, for now, B is definitely focusing on gender-neutral housing. And from mm-hmm. what I hear, it is still, even though it's kind of been indefinitely postponed in mm-hmm. terms of they don't have a date, I hear they're still working very hard on it. Yeah. Um, and Dean Elmore is definitely collaborating with student government, mm-hmm. which is great to hear because yeah. I don't think it's been forgotten. I think it's just kind of a totally limbo agree. phase. And on that note, I was going to ask if I can make a plug. Um, so on Friday at 5.30, um, the Center for Gender, Sexuality, and Activism, um, also known as the CGSA, mm-hmm. is going to be hosting a safer housing mix- mixer. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you are looking for a roommate um, next semester, next year, um, and you want to make sure that roommate is respectful um, and is perhaps uh, – comfortable with queer or trans students mm-hmm. um come check us out and we'll try to hook you up with a roommate yeah. um someone who you can feel comfortable around okay and that's friday the 8th friday the 8th at okay. five thirty in the cgsa it's the basement of the gsc yep. so if you guys are interested definitely head down there um and i'm just you know if people have questions about this in general where is a good place for them to go i would say emailing gender neutral bu um okay. they have you know, a lot of people working on that mm-hmm. that zine um, and a lot of people who spend a lot of time working on these issues. Um, so if you have any questions and you want to email them, um, it's genderneutralbu at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Other than that, as silly as it sounds, I would say check out Tumblr. Um, I think Tumblr is mm. has a vast amount of information on yeah. all issues pertaining to gender and sexuality from, oh, my God, I think I might be gay, to oh my God, I think I might be trans. What do I do? How do I, how do I, what do I do? I don't know what to do. This is freaking me out. Yeah. You know, um, there are, a, it's a really, it's a really, there's a really great internet community out there. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, Swanson, thank you so much for coming of on. Of course. Thank it you for inviting so me. It was so great to have you. I'm really glad we had the conversation and I feel like we maybe cleared up some points that are a little bit unclear. Yeah, but I hope so. Awesome have you. We hope to have you, have you back. At some yes, point. I would love that. Thank you all so much. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, let's see. I'm trying to think. We're going to be going on spring break. Woohoo! Woo-hoo. Yay. So we're super excited. We're just Where are you guys going? I'm Tell going to uh, Montana for alternative spring breaks. Ah! Okay. So that's okay. exciting. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, go, no, go ahead. Howard. I will be heading uh, back home to Atlanta. Nice. Getting some nice. Yeah, nice. relaxation and warm weather and Chick-fil-A. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and I also going on spring break. To, I'll be going on alternative spring break to Harper Square, West Virginia. Swanson, you're going too. Awesome. I'm also going on an alternative spring breaks trip. I'm going to Flagstaff, Arizona. Mm-hmm. Awesome. I, I am so excited. Like, I, I need a break. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, I'm going to be hiking. Yo. It's about that time. It's about that time. It's about that time. Well deserved break. No yeah. kidding. But um, when we come back, we are planning to do an episode on. Guns. <laughs> <laughs> you guys knew it was coming at some point. I mean, we had to do it. We're 
gonna it's gonna be good. Yeah, so we have it. two members of College Republicans coming on to talk to us about. But you didn't uh, know they existed. <laughs> <laughs> we're not starting this off on the road. No, I'm sorry. No, we're very excited to have them. We're, no, yeah, we are. In case you are. can't tell, the three of us are pretty liberal. I, I feel like after this episode, yeah, I feel like <laughs> it's pretty obvious. Yeah. So we're we're getting you know the other half of the population to come on, and we're gonna talk about. You got guns, to. You got to. Gun control, and it's gonna be an interesting conversation. I'm excited. But uh, you guys should definitely tune back in. So that'll probably be in, what, two, like two weeks? Two weeks, yeah, two weeks from today. Don't forget about us. We won't forget about you. But thanks, you guys, so much for listening in. This is The Common Thread, the official podcast of the Howard Thurman Center for Common Ground. I'm Amanda Dowd. I'm Will Klepp. And I'm Howard DePass, Jr. And we'll see you after spring break.